So the question is, is, is what's going on in the Ukraine a precursor to the Battle of Armageddon? If so, shall we be looking up now for our redemption draweth nigh? Correct? And I need to give a little bit of background maybe on this, which is I think a lot of people believe that this Armageddon and God versus Magog and all these things involve Russia. And and so everybody's so excited when, oh, there might be a war with Russia, or Russia's acting weird, and oh, Putin's probably this, and Putin's probably that. So now, Tina, I'll let you go and answer this question. Um, I, yeah, I think that's another aspect I didn't even think about, off, you know, off the top of my head. Um, but what I would say to this, because I, I think, yeah, a lot of people think, oh, you know, Russia's you know, King of the North, or Dan 11, or all these things. I wouldn't, I don't want to say, like, Oh, it's you know nothing. I think everything you know should point us back to the reality that Jesus is coming soon. That we need to make sure we're always right with God, and that we don't know when our time is. You know to to you know you know when our the end of our life will be, and um, that's the end of our story. And you know how we made a decision to be right with God. So we need to be doing that on a daily basis. Um, but as far as you know, what's going on in the world? Um, you know, over in the Ukraine. Um, I, I don't mean to dismiss it. I'm, I'm not dismissing what's happening because I know it's very serious. And I think we need to be praying for these people in this part of the world and, you know, doing what we can to, um, show them Christ's love. But I do think, um, it's one of many climaxing things that are happening in a world that are part of what we see in Matthew chapter 24, verse six, um, where basically Jesus is talking about, um, you know, the end of the world or, you know, signs of his coming to his disciples. And what it says in 24 verse six, it says, Jesus says, and you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So basically, you know, um, and it's, if you continue in, in verse seven, it says for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against key kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. We definitely experienced that, you know, recently in the last two years of pestilence that's um, gone on. But again, it, the end is not yet. Um, we do need to be, you know, looking for Jesus coming. These are signs of his coming, but this is not the end. This this uh, situation in and of itself, um, you know, is, I wouldn't say is the end. The end is not yet. Uh, but I would say, you know, we definitely need to be, again, like I'm saying, praying, making sure we're right with God. And, um, and again, using every chance we have to witness to others of the love of God that, you know, and of Jesus that his coming is very, very soon. Um, I don't know, Jay or Wendy, you have and, any thoughts on and, that? And, and, you know, there are obviously for people who are more at higher risk from this event, you know, it, all of us have, you know, our, our, our life is, is short. It's limited. We don't know when, when our last breath will be, we, you know, we don't know. And so, making the choice each day each moment to give our heart to god to live according to him to seek his path for us his will for us that is the important thing that we focus on all the time it's 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 not the world events that are going on we know these things are going to happen because you know the bible has talked about it for thousands of years so um we know these things are, are going to happen and but we the focus should be on our relationship with God, our connection with God, and living our life the way He would have us to live it each day. Amen. Um, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say one last thing. Um, if you keep going, one more verse. Matthew <laughs> 24, verse 8. It says, All these are the beginning of sorrows, which is like birth pangs, which they're going to be you know, think these you know, war, wars, rumors of wars, all these things are going to get, you know, they've been around for hundreds of years, but they're going to get more intense and more strong as we get closer and closer to the coming of Jesus. Um, so I definitely see that, um, you know, this is definitely, again, it's a warning, you know, just like as birth pangs, meaning like, you know, when you're going to have a baby, which as somebody who's had a baby, let me tell you, <laughs> it gets more and more intense right before, you know, you give birth. And, you know, at first it might be a little bit, but then as it's it closer, they become stronger and closer together. And we see that definitely happening in, in our world. So, you know, may this be a wake up call for all of us to, you know, again, like you're saying, be right with God. 
um, and you know do what we can to to share the gospel with the time short time we have left in um, because we don't know <laughs> we don't know the hour. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, the, the battle of Armageddon, just to say, like, it really is the battle of the heart, as we're talking about, is mm -hmm. that decision to be with God, the decision to be on his team, his decision to stand like, like, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo, you know, when everybody's bowing down to the false idol, the false image, are you willing to stand true, even in the threat of death, for God and for what's right and for what's truth? And that's the heart of, of this battle that we see in Revelation 13 through 16. Amen. Okay. Amen to that. Well, and I know we God and choose life. time. Oh, sorry. I was just to say, I pray everybody chooses God and chooses life. Amen. Amen to that. That's God's will for all of us. Mm -hmm.